our series diving into the Danielson Group's document for remote teaching. This video builds off of our previous one where we looked at knowing and valuing your students and now we're going to turn our focus into building responsive learning environments. As we develop connections and build relationships with students, we now have to move to building an environment that is responsive to the needs of the learner. And this may mean that we have to make adjustments to the systems and supports that we currently have, or maybe we need to just make new ones altogether based on what we learn about our students. And building responsive learning environments really incorporates three key components. Create an environment of respect and rapport, managing routines and procedures, and using assessment. And I think virtual learning can very easily become one-directional where the teacher is constantly feeding students their content. So I want to focus on things that we can intentionally create to make sure that students are not just receiving information, but they are active in helping to create the learning environment of which they are part of. And I think first off we can create norms. Norms are the standards and expectations for behavior to help our groups and our time be more productive and to build a community that can work together. And I think this works for both synchronous and asynchronous instruction, but they need to be student-generated. You know, creating norms may seem more obvious for synchronous instruction because you have more whole group opportunities, maybe uh, chances for discussions and interactions. Uh, however, we must find ways for students to interact and discuss with each other, even if the instruction is asynchronous. So norms could include things like response times to messages. And learning is a very social activity in many ways, thus it makes norms important to create. And we also have to create routines, whether that is for whole group, small group, or individual instruction. Uh, this helps develop that sense of community and a shared identity that we can all bring together. And these can range from the way that we start lessons to how students can jump into a conversation, all the way to things like labeling assignments and due dates. Norms and routines are definitely things that will have to be reinforced and modeled many times, especially for an online environment. Making sure that we create clear standards for success through our assessments is another vital piece. And a critical part of that is timely feedback. You know, in face-to-face -face instruction, a lot of that feedback can be given just right in time and very quickly. You know, I'm walking around the room, I see a student struggling, and I can provide support immediately. And the power of a 10-second conversation is incredible. But that gets a lot more difficult with virtual learning. But I think there still are a few things that we can do to help provide that feedback. Consistent, short, formative assessments can give the teacher insight to where a student is at. And those formative assessments can be short, they can be very brief, just did the student you know, get the objective for the day. But those assessments are only as good as the feedback and the response that the teacher then gives. And for that reason, uh, one strategy I would consider using is to group students who are making similar errors or struggling with the same concept and bring them together for a five to ten minute session. Even if instruction is normally done asynchronously, can I, can I bring this group together? That'll help save the teacher time as well as make a big impact on the students. And also, don't forget the power of self-assessment. You know, teaching students self-awareness and how to identify their own strengths and weaknesses not only helps them with your content, but it's also an important life skill. And so building a responsive learning environment, it's centered on knowing our students as a whole person, valuing them as a member of that learning community, and then with them, creating an environment built on respect to help them achieve to the highest levels. And be sure to check out our third video on engaging students in learning, where we will hear an administrator's perspective on ways that we can do this in a virtual environment.